Okay, so we, we're going to talk about, again, systems, equations, word problems. They're very, these are very similar to last night's word problems. Um, they might look different, but they're really quite almost exactly the same thing as the money word problems. And if you remember, the, the, with the money word problems, we had two things, two equations. One was the quantity, right? We had the quantity of... In that case, yesterday it was a coins, okay? Right now, with this, we're talking about quantity of flowers, okay? But it's still the same thing. We had dimes and nickels, right? So dimes plus nickels equals, say, 12 or something, right? And then, but then we wanted another one that was value, right? How much did the dime cost? Well, the dime cost how much? 10 cents, right? So you would put a 10 in front of the D. 10 cents times the number of dimes gives you the value of, those, the, of the dimes you have. Plus, nickels are 5 cents, so it would be five, times, 5 cents times the number of nickels. That gives you the value of your nickels equals your total amount of money, whatever that is. Well, this is the same thing. The only difference is that they're not dimes and nickels and quarters where we know the value is... 10 cents, 5 cents, 25 cents, right? It's something different, so we have to figure out what those, what the terms are, wh whether we're going to do D and, we're not going to do D and N for dimes and nickels. We're going to do, we have flowers. I bought what kind? So Tom spent eight, $8.70. That's a value. That's not a quantity, right? $8.70 to buy a bouquet of 10 flowers. So he bought 10 flowers. That's quantity. So he bought 10 flowers. And what kind of flowers did he buy? He bought both dandelions and petunias. So I'm going to make dandelions D, right? The number of dandelions and the number of petunias are going to be P, right? Does that make sense? And so immediately I write D, dandelions plus petunias is equal to 10. That's my quantity, no longer of coins, my quantity of flowers, right? So it's really pretty straightforward. Now I have to do a value, a value. So I have to put the value of a dandelion in front of the D for my value equation. Does that make sense? So I have, okay, dandelions cost 90 cents each. So since dandelions cost 90 cents, I'm going to put 90 in front of my D, because D is just the number of dandelions. 90 cents times the number of dandelions gives me the value of the dandelions, right? Make sense? And then plus, um, petunias cost 80 cents. So my value of my petunias is 80 cents times the number of petunias. ADP. ADP equals my total amount, or Tom's total amount that he spent, which eight, was $8.70, or 870 Notice I'm writing these as cents, not as dollars. I'm not doing point nine zero. I'm doing it as cents. So i got to write this as cents, right? Everything has to be in cents, or everything has to be in dollars, right, with decimals. Either way. I just think it's easier without the decimals. So, so now we've got two equations, a quantity equation and a value equation. Do you see how it's very similar to the money word problems? You get that? And so I want to, I'm going to use systems of equations by elimination, right? And I immediately see I've got 90 D and 80 P, 80 smaller. I'm going to do the 80. I'm going to multiply this whole top one by negative 80. That way negative 80 and positive 80 will cross out, okay? And so thank you so much for doing that. So I'm just going to rewrite it underneath this one. So I have negative 80D, negative 80P, <coughs> negative 800. And then I draw my line, I'm going to add them together. So I have 10D is equal to, these cross out, right, equals 70. So divide by 10, divide by 10, D is equal to 7. So I know that Tom bought seven dandelions. And so now I just go up here. If he bought seven dandelions and he bought a total of 10 flowers, how many petunias did he buy, Gavin? Three. Three. So 
So I know the petunias, you know, petunias were three. And then I would actually, I you should technically you should write the answer in words. He bought, um, what did I say? Seven dandelions. I'll put dandies. And um, three petunias. Right? And then I put it in a box so I can, so the teacher can find it, and I'm done. Does it, do you see how it's very similar Wait, to last night? What? Can you buy for flowers? No. Can you just try them? Well, you can, yeah, but, you know, like, well, they buy, I don't know, they, you know, I don't know. I was making it up fast okay. last night, right? I had a feeling somebody asked me about 90 cents for a dandelion, right? I agree. But, you know, they say they're really good for you. Dandelions, like, if you eat dandelions, oh, put them in your yeah. salad. There's something about them that's, like, really healthy. They're just, they're really bitter, you know, so they're not very yeah, good. My dog used to eat really? All right. So can I erase this? Does everybody have this whole thing down in their notebook? Yeah. Have the whole thing, everything. Okay. No, I'm just asking. It's fine. So I can erase it. All right. All right. We're gonna do one more so that I feel like you really are ready to tackle the homework. And, and then we'll, um, so write this as I write it. I'm going to read it out loud as I write it, so you can write it too. So this is number two. Okay, Olive spent $14.60, 14.60, to buy 20 candy bars. Should have put Mike up for this one. I just realized, but that's okay. Um, she bought chocolate almond and raspberry twist. Chocolate almond. That's the first one. And raspberry twist. Whatever that is. This is just Olive. Olive did. It's her. It's her fault. Okay. She paid. Oh yeah. She paid uh, eighty-five cents for the chocolate almond. Whoops. For the chocolate almond. And 55 cents for the raspberry twist. And 55 cents for the raspberry twist. Um, how many of each did she buy? How many of each did she buy? Second or two to finish that. What? What? Well, I mean, in this scenario, candy bars are expensive. I mean, I think you can get Hershey's, like the Hershey's, which are like seventy-five cents, but they're they're junky. I don't like them. I like the real thing, which are more like two dollars, two two thirty-nine. You know. But I like the dark chocolate. I don't like dark chocolate. I like the weekend. Oh. All right, so system equations. Okay, so here we go. We've got Olive spent. All right, Olive spent fourteen dollars and sixty cents. That's my the total. That's the. Okay. Yes. So right. So we've got a C. Let's do it just a different color for a second. So chocolate almond is a C, and raspberry will make it R. Okay. Raspberry and chocolate almond. So we've got C plus R is equal to 20. That's our quantity of candy bars bought. Number of chocolate bars plus the number of raspberry twists equals 20. Now we have to do our value. 
So yeah, so 85 is the value of one chocolate almond, so I've got to put 85C plus 55R because that's my value of my 55 cents for the raspberry twist. So I put my value of the ra raspberry twi twist is equal to the total amount of money she he spent, which was 1,460 cents. Okay? And, um, or she. Do I say he? I don't know. But anyway, um, C plus R equals 20. So what would I do? I would do systems of equations by elimination. I tend to like to, to multiply by the smaller numbers. You are multiplying by negative 55. So right, so negative 55, negative 55. And then, so that would be negative 55C uh, minus 55R equals, anybody know what that is? Oh yeah, it's um, 20, wait, 20 times 85? 55. Oh, 20 times 1,100. 1,100. Okay. So there we go. So now we can add them together. The R's are going to cross it's out. It's right? Gary. Oh, sorry. Negative. negative. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. And the, so here we've got 30 C's, I think, is equal to 360. Am I right? All right. If I divide by 30, divide by 30. Do you guys know this little trick? No. If you're dividing, if you have a n number upstairs that has a zero in the end, right, and you have a number downstairs with a zero in the end, you can cross the two zeros out. So really I have 36 divided by 3, 12. which is 12. So I know that C, the number of chocolate almond bars, were 12. You bought 12 chocolate almond bars, right? So how many um, raspberry twists? Eight. I just, yeah, subtract it from 20, so the raspberry twist is equal to 8, yeah. and, I am, and I am done, right? So I have to say it. So she bought, um, what did I say? So 12 chocolate almond bars and 8 raspberry twists. And then I put it in a box so the teacher can find it, and I'm done. So fist to five. Do you guys feel like you get it? You get the idea of how to set it up? It's just like last night. It's exactly like last night. The only difference is you don't know. Right, it's really easy, right? Systems of equations in general are really easy, and they're very, very powerful. Very powerful. Um, and they make more sense sometimes than trying to solve things with one variable, because a lot of times you, you're dealing with two unknowns if you, if, if you have two unknowns, it's just easier to have an X and a Y, or a D and a C, or a C and an R, or whatever, right? And so that, in order to do that, though, if you have two variables, you have to have two equations to solve it. If you had three variables, you would need to have three equations to solve it. Four variables, four equations to solve it. Rowan. Oh, wait. So how do you get the second one where the eight was? How do you get the second one? Oh, great question. Sorry, I didn't, I kind of did that too fast. So the first one was 12. So I go back to my first original problem, my first original equation, either one of them. But this one is the easiest one, right? C plus R equals 20. So I go C, so C plus R equals 20. That one's going bad. And then my C is 12. So I put 12 plus R equals 20. And I subtract 12 from both sides. And that gives me r is equal to 8. Does that make sense? Right? Because I know that they've got a total up to 20. So that's it. So that's basically it. So I'm going to, let me see, 841. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the video. I'm going to give you guys your homework. Some of the homework involves uh, repeats or, or like different kinds of problems. Let me just go over a couple. Consecutive even integer problems. The sum of a certain number of, say, three consecutive even <coughs> integer problems. You guys remember how to do that? <coughs> consecutive means right next door, right next to each other. Right, consecutive even. What's an example of three consecutive even numbers? Tom? One, two, three. Well, that's consecutive. Oh, consecutive, consecutive even, even. is a two, four, six. Two, four, six, right? 
you have one? No. Question? Yeah. Oh, I have them. I just have to decide how to grade them. Um, like, like the, 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 the thing that a lot of people messed up on is the graphing. Don't ask me why. I mean, the graphing is the easiest part of it. it was the easiest part. I thought it was pretty easy. So, um, so I just, I wasn't clear on how to grade them. Yes. Okay. So, um, I have them, but I'll, I'll give them to you tomorrow. Um, um, just remind me. Did we do good in the whole class? Overall, you guys did fine. It's just the graphing. You know, it's like I, it's like I didn't expect you guys to not know how to graph slope intercept. You know, and and point slope. And we went over it right before the quiz. So, um, but anyways, um, I'm going to turn this off.